We were told a fate binder was coming, though our commanders will not say why. It seems obvious. Grave and Ash and the voices of Narok can agree on something, on nothing. Least of all battle plans to wipe out the Oathbreakers. I trust you bring orders from Tunan that will break this deadlock. I guess it'd be too much reading to read everything. Out loud, at least. I got it. Here, here at last. tell you didn't spend the conquest in a diplomat's tent. I'm verse, by the way. But there are more important things to take care of than introductions. Those Vendrian guard we killed didn't come alone. A Scarlet Fury, one of the elite killers of our ignoble gang. You'll see more than a few of us are- Most of the soldiers in the Scarlet Chorus are little more than farmers and children armed with rusted- The voices of Narat called his best fighters to this siege. There must be something important about Vendrian's well. Eager. <laughs> I like that. Before we go, you might search up no reason to pity the fallen. Before long, we might wish we'd joined them here. For the voices of Narat! Yeah, I think this is gonna be a playthrough where I mostly follow the Scarlet Chorus. If you already know what that is. I'm not sure yet. Why am I dropping frames or anything? Shoot.
trouble is coming. We should go. <laughs> I got it.
Right. Let's do. Right. Pretty sure I want to help this guy. It would be nice to know why this could happen. Drop. Maybe it's just loading every time. I don't remember that happening before. At the camp. Well, there's this barrack. Yeah. Apparently, the worst partner to have in this. I didn't know that before. I used him in my other playthroughs all the way through.
tent. The war tent. Sorry, I can't. Do I have any points? No. Okay. to the tent. That's four reports of avalanches in the mountains now. The Tearsmen can barely count past nine. They have neither the capacity nor the cause to close off the mountain passes. Either way, that leaves the second and fourth cohort trapped outside the valley. Or it's the work of your perfidious Earthshakers. Only a fool would not suspect a traitorous archon of poisoning the mind of his students with sedition. We would have killed the Earthshakers Guild for their master's treachery, but I'm sure you have some perfectly valid reason for allowing them to live as your pawns. Hey, watch yourself. When these two get going, you don't want to get between them. Did I give you permission to speak? Ah, the fire starter has arrived! Welcome, welcome! Our agents tell us such lovely stories of what you did at the Vellum Citadel. At My soldiers tell me you helped Commander Drossus on your way through Edring. You honor the court with your selfless cooperation, but that is the sort of camaraderie that Kairos demands of us all. Modesty is your prerogative, oh. but know that cooperation and goodwill have been rarities of late. You do your lord too, Nana. No, oh, don't mind us while you trade your gushing praise. We're sure the Fatebinder has come because our company lacks in small talk. It seemed only yesterday you were proving your worth in battle, assisting my warriors in the siege of the bastard city. Now Kairos has chosen you for a second time to proclaim an edict. Tell us, good Fatebinder, what sort of punic... The Overlord means to compel us into action. No doubt the avalanches in the mountains are part of this ultimatum. We must conquer the Oathbreakers or die in failure. There is no room for error, and no other way out of this valley alive. We'll need to advance across the Matani. We lose everything if we stand still, and we move to back up Plan Green. The Earthshakers didn't make it over the mountain in time, so we do this the hard way, over the walls instead of through. 
So, you found your backbone at last! <laughs> oh, we were worried past humiliations would make you soft, timid. That was a record for you, right? The Baker's Dozen lost in one sortie. If you had waited for the chorus reinforcements, maybe we'd have eyes and ears on the matter. You make it sound like you've been putting even the slightest effort into getting a foothold across the Matani, when all you've done is set your gangs to uncoordinated raids. You're the Archon of Secrets. Why is it you still don't know the enemy's full strength and capabilities? Maybe you know, and choose not to share. Look, if you're afraid to send more troops against the Oathbreakers, just admit that you're a coward and allow us to take charge of the situation. The Scarlet Chorus will be happy to prove it can do what the disfavored cannot. The Fatebinder is right. We're acting not I as leaders, but as children. I've no time for your foolish japes and petty taunts. We should focus on the objective at hand, and that is taking the Matani River and then advancing to Ascension Hall and ending this edict. Our soldiers clamor for battle, and at last we shall have it. Verse, we command you to continue guarding the Fate Binder. Do not. I won't let you down, boss. He'll get through the. Finally, the fool and his puppet are gone. Perhaps now I can hear myself think. Rarely do I question Kairos' judgment, but I will never understand why the voices of Narat is given such authority. I shudder to think what will become of us all should Tunan favor him in the end. Though the Edict threatens the Scarlet Chorus just as it threatens us, I cannot shake the feeling that our allies will work against us. Now, if you'll leave me be, I have a battle to plan. I imagine duty requires you speak with the Chorus further. But if I can convince you to lend a hand, most of my legion is trapped beyond the mountain. If you wish to be counted amongst the Glorious, speak with the Iron Marshal. She will direct the order of battle until we are ready for the final push into the Citadel. 